Hello and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today we say hello to Mike Amundsen. Hey Mike, how are you doing? All right, it's good to see you again, Eric. Yeah, good to see you. Today we have a special occasion. So you wrote a book, which is a big surprise to everybody because you never did that before. No, no, no. <laughs> so it's your book number 18 or something like this. Some um, sort of number, yeah. But it is pretty impressive the way you churn out these books. This one is a really nice one. I like it a lot. It's called the RESTful Web API Patterns and Practices Cookbook. Yes. And it is a cookbook. So it's a collection of things to work with and to turn into delicious things, maybe. And I think you, <laughs> you have this nice history of cookbooks that were put out by O'Reilly over time. So tell us a little bit about you know that cookbook concept that I probably was established by O'Reilly. Yeah, I, I, I really think it was. Um, I, I was actually just talking to the person who wrote the very first cookbook for O'Reilly, ah. uh, uh, Pearl Cookbook, Nat Torkington. Actually, he was co-author. And uh, we were talking about how they wanted to establish this way of talking about uh, things to do in a little bit more expansive way, but a very standardized sort of way. So it's problem, solution, example, discussion, and then see also, kind of this idea like there could be other things here in the book or something that are related, which is I think a really handy pattern. So these cookbook recipes are very implementation specific. He wrote it in Perl, like how do I manage variables or how do I deal with an array or something. Uh, mine's a little bit more, a uh, little bit more abstract because it's really about creating network applications or using patterns like paging or uh, designing something for for easy modifiability, stuff like that. So it's a little bit more abstract, but it's the same basic idea. So you can dive into the book and just say, hey, I got this problem. Hey, with, hey that's the problem I have. And now what's the solution? And you know, can you show me how? And then what are some variations or discussions or caveats? So it was actually a very fun book to put together. And there's about 75 recipes in the book. That's a good number of recipes, and I'm, I'm sure it was a lot of fun. In particular, you know, with your experience, the, the number of things you've done, right, there's a lot of substance to dig into, a lot of recipes to, to give to uh, readers. One thing I'm wondering, the way you kind of frame this concept of cookbooks, would you say this is a book to read? This is a book more like a reference book? What's how do you think the majority of people will use this book? Yeah, I, I actually talk a little bit about that in the preface too. Um, but I think the majority of people are going to sort of scan over the book. Uh, the book is in several sections, different kinds of recipes. And there's a little bit of narrative in the beginning, some history and behind the scenes and theoretical concepts. I think people are going to scan the book and then sort of use it as a reference. Hey, you know, we need to do paging or we need to, to have this yeah. workflow pattern or something, and then they'll go kind of dig into it. I think I think that's really the the value of the book, and hopefully, it'll be valuable for a long time. I, I tried to make sure that we talked about concepts in a way that will work no matter what technology you're using. Mm -hmm. And I, I I agree. I think the the way at least the way I looked at the book when I got it, right, and I have a copy of it. Um, <laughs> thanks a lot for having that sent to me. Um, oh, well, yeah, thanks uh, for your feedback on it, too. The way I read, and I didn't read it completely, right? But like you said, I think it's a good idea to skim it, to look through those sections and see these are the things that are covered, right? And then if you actually have issues that you have to deal with, then I think it'll be much easier to go back to the book and say, oh, I remember there was a bunch of recipes about workflows, and I'm struggling a little bit here how to do that, and then you can go back to it. So yeah, I think this combined mode is actually probably the most useful way, I would say, to treat the book. Or you can just read all the recipes, even though I have to say that I don't think I ever read through the cookbook <laughs> and all its recipes. No. But I mean, there are some cookbooks I've used, right, where you really, I have definitely went through all of it and looked at it and still sometimes go back to it and remember things that I saw. And then I really read it and say, oh, now I want to have this. Well. And also, I, I kind of borrowed from some cookbooks, real cookbooks that I really enjoy, which are, there are collections of recipes for, <clears throat> for different seasons or different types of foods, but there's also some narrative in the beginning. So often I would read those first couple of chapters or 
read the introductions to a chapter to kind of understand the history of the dishes and where they come from and why, and, and sort of skip over the details until I wanted to make that particular dish. So I try to do that in this book as well. So there's there are actually two sections to the book. There's the understanding section, and then there's the, the catalog, sort of the catalog of recipes. So, so I kind of did a similar thing as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, let's, let's, could you just very briefly walk us through those five different sections that you have included so that people at least get an idea of what's the coverage of the book? Yeah, so the, the, the five sets of recipes are in this order, design, client, service, data and workflow and they, they it's like a sort of a five course meal it's like everything leads to the next <laughs> one and and that way you can you can sort of focus on oh i have a design problem even if you're not sure what the problem might be we're designing apis let me just scan the list and there are some of these are practices like it's a good idea to design for modded viability what does that really mean and then there are other things that are very specific about you should use a format that has these following features or something like that. So you can kind of go through each one and that works for all five topics. So, uh, and, and I purposely started with a design and then moved to clients before I moved to services. Typically we do services first a lot, but I did clients then services in the, in the, in the list, mm -hmm. in the courses. <laughs> one ingredient uh, that is very uh, common throughout the book is uh -huh. hypermedia. Yeah. Right. So you you have a lot of hypermedia spiciness <laughs> over <laughs> over a lot of these recipes, yep. and I'm just wondering, right? So because it, it, it it's about web APIs, and I think it's it's really useful for a very large set of people. But on the other hand, it also mentions hypermedia a fair bit. So how would you say? How specific is it for hypermedia? Why does it have like this much hypermedia? Um, yeah. So, it. well, yeah, the, the, the first, the, the quick answer is, well, it's about the web. So there's hypermedia all over the web. So we're going to use that too. And I talk a little bit about that in the, in the first section, in the understanding section. At the same time, hypermedia is not the only reason or the only way to solve these problems. So there are quite a few recipes in here that work no matter what kind of uh, format, whether or not you're using hypermedia or RPC, or even in some cases GraphQL, which is mentioned a little bit in the data chapter as well. So it's not like all of these uh, uh, recipes require it, but it's a bit like mm -hmm. a sort of like a cuisine or sort of like, you know, like you say, a sort <laughs> of a, a set of recipes that have, a, you know, a line, uh, uh, you know, tying all of them together. And I've, I've always found, and I talk about this in the book, I've always found hypermedia to offer some really good solutions. Um, so I don't want to miss those. I don't want to leave those out. So it's sort of like the way I've been, the way I've been dealing with this for the last 10, 20 years. And I'm going to share that with the, with the reader. Yeah, and uh, thanks. Yeah, I think that's a good explanation. I, I also like the way how you look at hypermedia, you know, right? like saying it like it's a good ingredient in many cases, not always, but in many cases, yeah. and it's one that you have a lot of experience with, and it's not one that is necessary in all cases, but it's just like a good general thing to at least consider. So I think that's, yep. that's a very useful thing. So yeah, I think there's a lot of really interesting things to explore. Um, are there any resources you would like to point people to, to start exploring or maybe learning more about the book so that they can maybe investigate a little bit further before they decide uh, that they want to buy it? Yeah, so there's actually a website, a landing page for the book. It's called webapicookbook.com. Um, so yeah. that's a great place to start. Um, and that sort of has, it has pointers to uh, an online version of the book at O'Reilly, pointers to the, your local Amazon store if you want to do that. But it also has pointers to some extra resources. I did a lot of diagramming of these of these recipes and workflows and interactions. A lot of these are interactive uh, services. So there's a pointer to a set of a collection of the of the drawings of the diagrams. And there's some additional stuff that didn't make it in the book. The book is pretty long. The book is uh, uh, almost 500 pages, 470, 480 yes. pages, which is which <laughs> is one pretty of, long one of the for bigger nowadays. Ones. One of the bigger ones for nowadays, uh, but I still left stuff out. So uh, there's still stuff that that you could find online, and then um, as things move forward, there might be some more material, related material, more demos that appear. So that's a good place to start. Web API Cookbook 
www.ethicsmith.com and that'll point you off into a lot of directions. Okay, I will make sure to include that in the description down below. And um, well, I think with that we have we have given people enough information to have a you know have a look, see whether they like the the cuisine that you're offering. Yeah, and then yes. hopefully they'll start using it. I think it's that's useful. Right. I'll definitely use it for some of my cooking exercises. That's for sure. There you go. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Mike, for joining, and thanks a lot for taking the time, um, and yep. thanks everybody for watching. Yep. And um, until next time, keep getting APIs to work, and maybe keep putting some hypermedia into hypermedia into them. Right. It's a good ingredient. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So long. Bye, everybody. Bye.